Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. And now today we move to Bitcoin.com for the news. And this is an interesting article. Open Bazaar 2.0 is now running on the Tor network. Well, this is Open Bazaar in development 2.0, but uh, they've got it running on the Tor network. This is an article by Kevin Helms and it's 17th of September. 2016. Actually, that was article written yesterday. Uh, now, there's this picture of this marketplace, and there's someone receiving some change, and there's a there's an arm with a sleeve that looks like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> so that's a interesting choice of photos. I don't think that's meaningful. That's just what I saw in it anyway. So Open Bazaar has just run the first successful test on its upcoming version 2.0, designed to run on the Tor network, the Tor privacy network. Developer Chris Passia connected to Open Bazaar over Tor using an alpha version of the upcoming version 2.0 software in his lab. This version of Open Bazaar is not complete and is only shown here as a command line code. However, this is the first time ever that anyone has successfully connected the upcoming Open Bazaar server to Tor. And we're going to find out why that is in a second. Open Bazaar developer Sam Patterson commented on the technical aspects on Reddit, saying, quote, This is possible because we are switching to IPFS for Open Bazaar 2.0, which is compatible with Tor, unlike the current 1.0 build. Close quote. CEO Brian, Co- sorry, Brian Hoffman tweeted just afterwards, expressing the excitement and enthusiasm that the connection was made. However, he did not guarantee that the upcoming version would launch with the ability to use Tor. In the past, OpenBazaar has disappointed privacy advocates for its lack of Tor support. This has kept many from using the platform to sell less than legal items. However, it has also avoided any negative press it would likely draw. Well, I don't think that's true. I think um, of almost every article that I've read about OpenBazaar has made a reference to the Silk Road and the dark markets and this and that and the other. So it hasn't escaped the negative press. Uh, in, in my mind. The developers have maintained, however, that it was not merely a choice to keep Open Bazaar's Bizarre, image on the up and up. It was, in fact, a technical matter. Tor requires the TCP protocol to function, but Open Bazaar version 1 was built on the UDP, or User Datagram Protocol. This made a connection to Tor impossible. Tor, which is short for the Onion Router, T-O-R, is the most commonly used network for dark web marketplaces. The home of .onion domain names, it requires special software to access and provides a high degree of privacy and anonymity to users. Tor was originally invented by employees of the United States Naval Research Laboratory to protect US intelligence communications online. Popular websites like Facebook also host Tor services to protect users' identities in countries where speech is suppressed. Well, that's ironic because Facebook have been censoring stuff a lot recently. So to say that um, speech is suppressed, well, that's happening in the West. So that's um, duplicitous in my mind. And it says the UDP backbone has been replaced for OpenBazaar 2.0, which is due within a few months, whenever that means. With this upgrade, the program will be able to have Tor built in by any developer, not just the OpenBazaar staff. Well, yes, because OpenBazaar is open source, so even if OpenBazaar, the company, doesn't release the version 2 with uh, Tor support, anyone could um, go to GitHub, download the OpenBazaar software, uh, add the Tor support, and then release it. So he says, do you think Open Bazaar being able to run? Oh, so what do you think of Open Bazaar being able to run on Tor? Let us know in the comments below. Um, well, one thing that spooked me about this article was that I'll have to look up the the article. But I thought I I read something a couple of months ago, or a few yeah months ago, a few months ago about how Tor had been basically some security holes have been found in it and um users beware sort of thing was the article 
So here's one article from the 8th of May called FBI Contracted Former Tor Developer to Create Torsploit Malware. And then here's another article from the 24th of July saying Tor Contributor Leaves the Network, Crucial Node Stops Working. So it says blah, 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 this guy, the Tonga node, is uh, being shut down. It's a bridge authority, that's important, blah, blah, blah. And then it says this news follows what has been a difficult uh, last few months for the anonymity software ever since the FBI created a backdoor into the software called Torsploit, which has been used to identify cyber criminals using the software to elude the authorities. So most people who aren't aware of what I see here as Tor's decreasing uh, privacy may be in for a shock. So the question is, how, how relevant is it the Open Bazaar are integrating Tor, given these these stories that keep coming out, like the uh, FBI sticks a backdoor into Tor, this critical node called the Tonga node leaves the network. Apparently, this guy's been involved in Tor since the very beginning, before it was even called Tor, before it was even called, before it was even a piece of software. So that's some major support from him has left. So just things like that. It's definitely, it's definitely. Um, Tor weakening rather than strengthening. So, you know, I'd be interested in your, your comments on that if you guys are into Tor and stuff like that. And um, I'd appreciate you commenting on those two articles that I just specified there to see if you agree or disagree whether Open Bazaar have got it wrong with integrating Tor and is it is it pointless? You know. Anyway, I think there is a there is a rival for uh, Tor called the Riffle. Um, I believe, which is a newer, shall we say, technology. I don't know hardly anything about Riffle other than it exists. So anyone else got any good links to Riffle or um, how it works? Let me know. All right, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. Thank you very much for listening today, as always. Please go to Cryptoversity.com, go over to the podcast page and subscribe yourself to the Cryptoverse. You can subscribe to the audio version of the Cryptoverse on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Or you can subscribe to the video version on YouTube. And please support the Cryptoverse. I'll be very grateful if you could. You can do that by sending us a Bitcoin tip directly using the address on that page. You can click the upvote button on the Steemit network to generate some uh, rewards. Alternatively, you can check out the Cryptoverse team merchandise store where you can buy yourself a t-shirt with the Cryptoversity branding on it, and that helps us out a lot. Or if you'd like some more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains, head over to the courses section and get yourself an online course. That's all for today, so to till tomorrow, guys, and the next episode of the Cryptoverse, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.